G'day guys, welcome to me lab. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Wheel of Time ARPG I've been working on in Godot 4. I have been super busy with it this week, learning a whole heap of new things, and I am keen to show you what I've been up to. Now, if you've been following along, you will know that one of the big things that took me a lot of time last week was messing around with scene transitions. In particular, it was where our player appears when they re-enter the overworld map, this map on the screen here. We wanna go into a lot of uh, different scenes throughout the map so we want to have a different scene for each town and all this sort of stuff so we need to make sure that when we re-enter the overworld map we appear next to that town not way back in our star location and i was a bit um confused as to how to do that without storing a big long list of all the appropriate spots and then calling those ones at the appropriate times this was not needed however and thank you to a very helpful comment which i'll put up there somewhere um, I was able to fix that very, very quickly this week. And so that's the first thing we'll have a look at. So what we have done, if we go and look in our scripts and we go to our global script, we've got these two, uh, two variables here. So the first one, uh, our variable last overworld position equals vector two. So we want to store our overworld, our last overworld position is vector two. And we've also got this one here, start origin equals true. So when we first start the game and our global, uh, our global script first fires up, we want our start origin to be true. We're gonna start at the point that we have decided will be our beginning place, which at the moment is just near the L4 farm. Um, but where this becomes quite handy is when we then flick over to our actual overworld scene and we look here. So if global start origin is false, so if this is not the first time that we fired up our game, um, then we want to set our player's node, our player location, to be the, the same location as we just stored in our overworld script with a slight offset, right? So when, if we come over here, actually let's just play it and we can talk about it as we do that, right? So we appear here, when I enter the L4 farm, it is recording where I was just before I entered it. And then when I exit again, it sends me out with just a slight offset of about seven um, pixels. That's just to make sure that I don't immediately trigger it again. So and we come out. So that way it's a much simpler method to do the same thing as what I was attempting to do last time. Um, but there's a few other things that have been going on this week which are a bit more exciting in my opinion. That was just something that needed to be resolved. I have been giving some thought to the inspiration for this game and I don't just mean the Wheel of Time which is obvious in the map, um, I hope, but also um, my teenage years sitting in front of the computer, dominating the phone line, playing MUDs, multi-user dungeons. And so as much as a lot of the concepts that were common in those MUDs are present today in, in um, MMORPGs and things like that, I don't want to think about World of Warcraft when I'm making this game. I want to think about um, a Deku MUD or something like that from back in the 90s. Um, and did you know I was able, in Australia, in year 10 at least in the 90s, work experience was a compulsory thing. Every year 10 student, so 15, 16 year old, did two weeks of work experience. And it was up to the student to organize where that was gonna be. Um, and basically there was two weeks where you went and worked for free um, and didn't go to school. And that's a pretty awesome and appealing thing to most students. Um, I was lucky enough to uh, be friends with some people running a brand new MUD. And I managed to convince my teachers that I was gonna be doing two weeks work experience um, computer programming. And that is kind of true, but it was from my house um, making a game that I also played. So it was the best work experience that I think anyone has ever had. But it's also kind of all tied up into why this is such a, an interesting thing for me is to relive some of those fond memories of childhood, right? Um, and MUDs are just a really uh, important part, I think, in my development when it comes to coding, when it comes to the internet, when it comes to games, um, even socializing because that was the it was through MUDs and, and IRC channels that I first got into talking to people online and things like that. And now I'm talking to people via video rather than just by typing in and going N, 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 W, W or whatever to move around a screen. We can do that with um, moving a sprite, but it's still all the same thing. And I want to keep that Deku mud kind of vibe. And that's the stuff I've been working on this week, right? So let's jump back into the game to have a look at what I'm talking about. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so you will hopefully notice at the top of the screen, we now have a uh, inventory 
list. We've got nine slots there and I've mapped those to the nine number keys. Um, and we've also got an HP and an XP bar. Oh, hang on, I'm getting attacked by my mental raven. Let me go grab my sword and deal with him. And then you will see some XP appearing, right? So you can see my HP has gone down. Um, you can watch our um, raven take it down. We can kill our raven and then we get some XP up in the corner here, right? So um, what I've also been able to do is um, thinking through how we did that in MUDs back in the day, I have set it up. So you can see here, we've also got level one, we've got our HP and stuff. Um, I'll show you the collectibles whilst we're in here. Oh, hang on, let's kill another Raven. I accidentally deleted some code that flipped him, but I'll put that back in later. Um, let's go in here. Now I've also got uh, collectibles sorted out to go with our inventory, right? So we've got a, a water skin and some honey cakes up here. They appear in our inventory up the top. Um, and we can access those using just our number keys. So if I want to eat the honey cakes, for example, I'll press the number two, the honey cakes disappear from that slot and my HP gets a big boost. Um, and we can do the same thing with the water skin but let's uh, get some more damage so we can see how that works. Kill this guy off. Water skin tops up our HP as well. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go in and out a couple of times just to kill a few more of these ravens so we can boost our XP and you can see as it goes up to level one. So we're sitting right on the threshold for level one now. If we go back out, find ourselves another raven, kill this one, we then go up to level two. And what I've done, now I'll exit out to talk about this again. What I have done is, like I said, I really wanted it to be in that same vein of the muds and things like that. So we, where are we? In our global script, what I've done is I've set up some information about those levels to start with. And I've set these thresholds. So level one is zero. Um, to, sorry, le level one is uh, you start at zero. To go to level two, you need 2,000, 4,000, 8 out, out there. So it exponentially grows, right? It doubles each time, which is very much in that same vein um, as though you know, some of those... Um, mud um, packages, DQ mud wasn't the only one, many of them work in that sort of vein where every level you needed double what you needed before. But that's a bit boring, right? So we've just got some logic there to handle making sure the correct level is being shown. I've also added in some information here that changes our stats, right? So one of the things about muds is that as you progress through the levels, you can um, invest i suppose in, in improving your stats so you might get certain points at the end of uh, or each time you level up and then you can spend those points on different um, criteria it might be things like strength stamina wisdom all that sort of stuff um hp right so i've just very rudimentally in um factored in one of those sorts of things too so we've added in something called um, attack power which is going to be 10 times our player level our player health is going to be our player health our player level times 100 so these things are all connected right so whatever our level is that has an impact on our health and our attack power that's just a very basic way of getting it working for now what else did i want to talk to you about so yeah we've i, I mentioned that we've got um, our uh, inventory and those HP and XP and stuff. And that involved creating a canvas layer, which I've made as an individual scene, which I can show you here somewhere, GUI canvas layer. So what I've got here, we're just mapping our uh, number pad, or sorry, our numbers one through nine on the top uh, there for each inventory item. So each of those numbers is mapped directly to one of the slots in our inventory. Now I might add in like inventory stacking so that um, the same items can stack and that way it gives us more room in our inventory. But for now, I'm happy with it being just a bag of nine because normally again, when you started with, um, with these mods, you didn't have much storage space and things like that as well. So there's got to be that progression through the whole thing too. Um, what else? I think that's the bulk of it. So let's have a quick um, dive into the game anyway, have a bit of a play. So what we're gonna do, the first thing we wanna do is go and get our sword. So now we have that opportunity. Remember, we also set up our dialogue system in the last one too, so that's still active. But we wanna use our sword to defeat some ravens. Um, we're gonna grab ourselves some water and some honey cakes. Now, at the moment, um, the ravens reset every time you re-enter the scene and the honey cakes and things reset every time you enter that scene too. But our player stats stay the same and that's important at this stage. We can change the others later. So after, I'm just loading up on honey cakes and, and water at the moment, but we can easily up our level with this one here. So now when we attack a raven, our attack power is twice as good but we need twice as much EXP in order to go up a level. Um, 
and also our H, our max HP is higher. And the other thing that I did is I factored in so that when you go up a level, your HP app actually starts at maximum on that new level, um, which is a, a common thing in many different mods and things as well. So that's a bit of a tour of where we are at at the moment. We've created for ourselves an inventory system, an HP system, an EXP system, a level system. Um, we've um, vastly improved our transitions. Um, yeah, it, it's really starting to feel like the bare bones of the sort of um, game that I've set out to make. And I've so that is our update from the Westlands today. Remember, I'm a teacher just trying to learn more about uh, game development so I can better teach my students. So if you've got some advice you can give me, I am all ears. Honestly, I try and respond to every single comment because I'm really keen on hearing from you guys about ways I can better do the things I'm doing here so that way I can teach the concepts better to my students so thanks very much I'm going to get all this up on github maybe next week or the week after when there's a good solid foundation and I would love to see what other people do with it as a basis to build on so thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time